Well, I thought for this first video, our first demo video here in chapter six, we would just kind of stick to the basics of the pure insert statement. So here's what we'll do. We'll talk about how the insert statement works, and I'll give you a little bit basic syntax in this video. But we'll try to keep it rather short, and then the next video I'll show you all the various syntaxes that we have. So let's just get a plain basic syntax going. Uh, let's pick a table here. Um, I'm going to keep it fairly simple. I don't want to use the member table because we have so many columns right now. Uh, let's just pick up the password hint. It's important that we know the structure of the table. We need to know, I'll just write this stuff down, uh, we need to know the columns. Uh, actually, let me make a multi-line thing. To do an insert, we need to know the columns. And I'll save this with the video so you have it in case you want to uh, have a local copy. We need to know the order of the columns. Like for example, this is the first column, this is the second column. Okay. We need to know the data types. We need to know the nullability. And we need to know if there are any defaults. And we need to know about constraints. I guess I could sort of collapse uh, this one and this one uh, because a default is just a constraint, right? We learned that a little bit earlier. Um, but you know, the default is always to me the oddball. It doesn't feel like a constraint. So mentally, I don't put it in the same box that I put a primary key. Like to me, uh, and, and I know this is just my way, it doesn't, it, it's kind of a goofy way, but I just think of a primary key, a foreign key, a check constraint or a unique constraint. Those prevent data. They, their whole purpose is to prevent things from happening. We don't want duplicates. Okay, primary key or unique constraint. We don't want child records that don't have parents. Okay, foreign key. But a default constraint, that's not what it does. It just puts a value in, in the event that you don't provide a value during your insert. Okay, so I, I would list it separately. Now, the basic syntax. Okay. Insert table name. So, just drag and drop if you're lazy. Okay. Now, we specify the column list. So, I would say hint ID display text. And again, I'm, I'm going to push a major syntax discussion to the next video. Let's just kind of stay high level at how it works. Okay. And date added. Okay. So actually, I'd probably do it like this. And then values. We'll talk about values versus select and exec in the next video. Open my parentheses. Okay. And I say this, uh, what would a password hint be? Um, we already have color. Uh, disease, your favorite disease. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite? I don't know why I just thought that. Uh, 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 and then today, uh, you really probably should watch someone else's training videos. <laughs> They're probably not as weird as I am. Um, so... Will this work? Does it meet our criteria? I, I think it does. We know what the columns are. Uh, we've specified the order of the columns here. That's not what's that's not what's really important with respect to this. Again, syntax in the next video we'll talk about that. We do uh, have to worry about our data types. Is this data type going to match with that? Yes. Okay. How about is this going to match with that? perfect. And we have a date. Well, here we have somewhat of an anom anomaly here. We have a date time function that's going to be placed into a date. So we're actually going to have a problem with this. How? What's going to happen though? Is SQL Server going to implicitly convert the date time into the date? Or is it going to throw an error? 
Well, let's go ahead and run this. Let's just select this first. And then we'll do that, and then we'll do it again. So here's what it looks like before we have four different password hints. Let's try to run our insert statement. It did. It was successful. And we come back, and sure enough, there is our favorite disease that was added here. So notice that it did actually do this sort of a conversion. This is called an implicit conversion. SQL Server implicitly converted the, the uh, date time into a date. Now, we have a lot of options here. We can do the conversion ourselves. So I would probably do something like this if I'm going to get a little more complex here. I like my each expression on an individual line. So if I'm going to start casting, then I might do something like this. Cast that as a date. Sorry. That would be one way. This would be explicit conversion. We are specifying what we want the target data type. We're not setting, telling SQL Server, change the date if you need to. We're taking care of any type conversion issues before it gets to SQL Server. Now, I, another option would be not to use get date. Do you remember if you go back to, and I'll pull up books online for this, uh, just highlight get date, go to F1. Uh, there's a lot of the different date time functions here. Notice that sys date time is going to return date time too. Uh, we can play a lot, play with a lot of the different date options here. You can go right here to your date and time functions if you want an overview of some of the uh, different functions there. Uh, so feel free to do your, golly, and it's just locked up. It's so ridiculous that clicking a link in the help. When I have the go online turned off, I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Online, try local only, not online. That's what it's set to. Ugh, it's annoying. Um, so anyhow, that's enough of that. I'm kind of rambling at this point. Uh, but here's the thing. Okay, and we'll close with this. And we'll come back in the next couple of uh, videos and explore some more areas of this here. If we forget some of these columns, or if we have data type issues, or if we have constraint issues, meaning that we're trying to insert a, uh, another um, row that would have a duplicate foreign key, uh, we're going to get error messages. So let's watch this. So this works the first time, and I'm going to go back to where we were. All right, so works. I'm going to copy this. And if I run it again, will it work? Now, see, this is where you have to know your constraints. We know that there's a primary key on the hint ID. So when I run this, because we violate one of the constraints, it's going to reject our row. And that same rejection would occur if we violated any of the constraints. If we violated a foreign key, it would reject it with error message 547. You can see 2627 is our primary key. If we violate it because of a unique constraint, we're going to get an error message back as well. So you have to pass your constraints. This is an important little bit right here. Um, I think I have the steps right here. I'm kind of going from memory. It's been a while since I've thought of this here. I'm just kind of riffing at this point. But uh, it's first checking. It's going through and doing your parsing. And you remember we had the four steps that SQL Server goes through. So it's going through and it's doing your parsing. Your parsing is checking that you got the columns in the right. Uh, or your parsing is just checking the syntax. Then your binding is going to check whether or not you left out any columns or you have too many columns. Like for example, if I said uh, another column up here, I'm not going to parse successfully because I have four columns here and only three down here. I'm going to get an error message. But if I match these up and I say put, then this is going to parse successfully because I have four columns in both the insert column list and the values here. But when it binds, it's going to see that there is no column, another column in the password hint. Right? And then my constraints are checked. So once I've bound successfully, let's go back to this one. 
Now it's going to actually run this and it's going to check my data types and constraints. So I'll add in uh, data types and constraints. And really the data types are probably more done in the bind uh, here. So I'll leave that out. And I mention this because when we get to chapter 7 and talk about triggers, that's going to be an important with a sequence to remember what actually happens. And then finally the insert would be done. Uh, so your constraints will bomb this out. Uh, if you have a column like display text, um, fails for primary key. Oops. Let's put it fails for uh, PK error. But let's do the same one down here and see what it does. I'm going to leave out the display text. Looking at the nullability of the columns, will this work? Now, if you said no, I have to question you and ask you how. Well, Scott, it says it's not null and you didn't add it in here. That's not enough. Remember this other one, and I'm sorry to scroll back, but remember that we, there might be defaults? What if there's a default? Then you could leave it out, and the default would take its place. But in this case, this is actually a critical component. We do not allow defaults. So there's no default bound to this column. See, we go down here and look. There aren't any constraints. Uh, so there's nothing, and we have to put that in there. All right, I think that's the the minimum that you have to know before you can really get into the syntax. So let's come back in the next video and I'll show you three of the syntaxes that we're going to be working with.